Hey guys, it's Ashley. How's it going? <laughs> Back again with another video after two weeks of not posting one. <laughs> also, I decided to start filming on the floor for some reason. I don't know why. It just kind of felt appropriate. So today I'm just gonna talk about the books that I read in September. There weren't many, this video is not going to be very long. I am in the middle of one book that I feel like is slowly pulling me out of this weird slump that I've been in for the past few months, so fingers crossed that happens, but Anyway, let's talk about some books. So if you were here with me last month, then you'll probably know that the two books that I did end up reading were the last two books in the Throne of Glass series. I was rereading the series because of some friends of mine were reading it for the first time, and funny enough, I managed to reread the entire series, the entire seven or eight books, and they have not even gotten through the fifth one yet. So I don't know what that says about me. I don't really want to examine it too much. So let's just move on. Anyway, so I read Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Maas. This is the... how many books are in this series? Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight books in the series, so this was the seventh book. And then I read Kingdom of Ash, which I'm gonna put down because it's a really heavy book. I know that I've talked about this series a lot relatively recently in other videos, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but I just really love this series and I'm really glad that I reread it because it's been years since I first read it. Like, when I first started my channel, that's when I first read this series, so it's been years and I've been wanting to get back into it. So I'm really happy that I did. I'm really happy that I can say that. I also kind of wish I had read some newer books so I had something to talk about, so sorry, but anyway. That's those. If for some reason you don't know what Throne of Glass is, it's just basically like a long young adult fantasy series following an assassin, but turns into a lot more than that. I personally think it's a really good YA series, so I'd highly recommend, but obviously it's up to you. Pick it up if you want. In my last TBR, I think it was, or no, I think I just made a wrap up last month, right? I don't even remember at this point. In whatever video that I filmed last month, I talked about the fact that after I finished those two books, I wanted to read either The Girl Who Drank the Moon or The Near Witch. Both of them I thought sort of had like a intro to fall sort of vibe in a way. Maybe The Near Witch was like more fall than like intro to fall. Is intro to fall even a thing? I don't know. I think I'm just making it up. So I did end up starting to read The Girl Who Drank the Mood by Kelly Barnhill, and the story, I can definitely see why people like it. It's really interesting. I really love the way that it's written. I love the short little chapters that you get at the very beginning of the story, and then they're kind of like interspersed throughout, where somebody is telling somebody else's story or like answering their questions and you're not really sure who is doing what, so it's kind of like a mystery, I'm assuming up until the end. I'm actually just halfway through it right now, and I'm still really liking it, but for some reason, it's taking me a while to get through. Personally, it's not one of those stories for me that really hooks you and like makes you want to keep reading at all costs, like a lot of other books are. Um, I think because it is more, not symbolic, but it's like, you know when you're reading a book and you know that there's like a deeper meaning to it, or some metaphors being drawn, but like you're just like too tired of reading that to like really draw that comparison or like realize what it is. Does that make sense? That's kind of what I feel like this book is. Like sometimes I would just read it before going to bed and I would just be so tired from the day that I, I, I didn't know what kind of point she was trying to make, though I knew she was trying to make a specific point, I just couldn't bring myself to kind of figure that out, so I would put the book down because I was kind of tired of reading it. Does that make sense? I really hope that it does. It's not that I'm not liking it, I really am liking it, and I feel like by the end, especially when some of the events that happen in the synopsis end up sort of coming to light and start happening, it'll definitely get more interesting and it'll make me want to keep reading. But at this point, I think I just wanted something a bit more fast paced, something that I could like fly through. So that's why the next book that I'm in the middle of, I think is going to be the one to pull me out of that reading slump. But if you don't know what this book is, I would still highly recommend reading it because I feel like once I do make it to the end, it's going to be a really beautiful book. But essentially it's about this town that lives next to this forest. And so there's this story that there's this witch who lives in the forest and if they don't give over a child to the witch every year, the witch is going to come and destroy their town. But the witch is not a bad witch, it's just some story that the leaders of this town have perpetuated, is that the word? Um, through the town to instill fear and to, you know, keep their rule. So the witch doesn't actually know why the town is leaving these babies every year, she just knows that she can't abandon them. So she ends up taking them, caring for them, and delivering them to towns on the other side of the forest who actually want and will care for the children. But when you're 
she ends up rescuing a child and feeding it moonlight instead of starlight like she usually does and it instills the baby with magical gifts. So she ends up having to raise the child on her own and all of these problems sort of come from that. In addition to that story being played out, we also follow this boy in the town who gives up the children um, and as he grows up wanting to destroy the witch because of all of the problems the witch is causing the town or the problems that he thinks the witch is causing the town. And then there's also sort of this like backstory slash history when it comes to the witch that is going to be repeating itself or like coming to light soon. So there's a couple of different plot lines that we're sort of following that I know are going to converge at some point. I just haven't gotten there yet. And I feel like once I do get to the point where they converge, it's going to be a really good book. But right now it's just kind of slow and I needed something fast, which is why the next book I'm really liking. I literally did not plan to pick up this book this month. Uh, I actually picked it up October 1st, so I guess I should say in October was when I started reading it, but I was not planning on picking this book up. You guys, I really wasn't. I had no plans whatsoever. I was really just looking at my shelves going like, what is a book that I have that will like make me interested in reading again? Like, what is a book that I can pick up that I own right this second that I will fly through? And for some reason, I was drawn to this. I started reading Aurora Burning. I have not read Aurora Rising in years. I think it was like two-ish years since I read the first book. I didn't remember half of what happened in that story. I didn't remember three quarters of what happened in that story, but for some reason I was drawn to this one and I picked it up on a whim without really wanting to remember what happened. I'm just like, you know what, I'll figure it out as I go. Luckily at the beginning of this book there was kind of like a summarization of each of the characters and uh, w what happened in the last book, which I did not know existed. I hadn't planned for that. So that was just kind of like real luck of me reading this book. But guys, this book. I'm back in that moment of every second of the day I'm thinking about what is going to happen in this story and every time I get home from work from whatever I'm doing I pick up this book and I want to keep reading it. Like I haven't felt that way about a story in a while and I don't think that rereading Throne of Glass counts because it was a reread and I already knew what I was getting into you know. So I'm really happy that I picked this up because I'm starting to sort of get in that rhythm again, at least with this book. I'm not going to say that it's going to happen with any other book, but we'll see. If you don't know anything about this story, Aurora Rising, which is the first book, is essentially a young adult sci-fi. It has very strong feelings of like Guardians of the Galaxy, where you have this sort of misfit ragtag group of space legionnaires, I think they're called, space cadets, whatever you want to call them. And, um, and they are sort of discovering like the end of the world is near and they're the only ones who can stop it. I think something that I really like about this book is that each of the characters has a very different personality that's like very unique to itself and even though the story is told in first person point of view, which I've said before and I will probably say again in the near future on this channel, I do not like first person point of view. Like the author when they're writing has to really like nail that character's voice and make the character's voice really unique and very stand out for me personally at least, just for me to be interested in reading first person point of view if that makes sense. So when it comes to this story, even though it is in first person, the writing and the voice of these characters are just so different from one another and it's just so funny all the time. Like I just, I forgot how much I loved the first book in this series and I've been wanting to pick this up. I've said this so many times on my channel, I've been wanting to pick up this book and I just haven't and I'm just like so happy that I finally did because I'm really really liking it. This book so far has definitely taken some turns that I was not expecting and it honestly didn't take me very long to remember exactly what had happened in the first book. Um, we also get backstory for a couple of characters that I was really hoping that we would from the first book that we didn't get much and we're getting it in this one and I'm just like so excited because I wanted to know more about these characters. Yeah, I don't know. I love sci-fi stories. I really do and I'm so so, so, so excited for Cytonic, which is um, Brandon Sanderson's third book in the Skyward series. That's coming out, I think, in November, and I'm so excited for it. And honestly, reading this story just makes me even more excited for it because now I'm back in that sort of sci-fi mindset. So I don't know. All around, I'm just really happy that I ended up reading this book when I did because it just, it makes me feel like I did when I first started my channel or, you know, even a year ago when I was just like gobbling up all of the books and I couldn't have enough. That's what this book makes me feel like. It makes me feel like I don't want to stop reading it. And that's what I was looking for. 
so yay. <laughs> so yeah, those were all of the books that I wanted to talk about. I realize now I said this video was not going to be very long, but I've been talking for 17 minutes and 30 seconds. That's how long my raw footage is right now. So this video is going to be anything but short. I'm so sorry. Just so you guys know, if you've made it this far in the video, I probably will not be putting up a October TBR. Instead, I'm going to put up like a fall TBR so that you will kind of get an idea of what I want to read over October and November. I'm really hoping that I can pick up the pace because there are so many good books coming out these next two months. So many good books, especially so many sequels and, you know, continuations to series that I've been really, really, really wanting to read. So I'm so excited and I'm just really hoping that things will pick up for me <laughs> in my reading life. And also don't be surprised if you see a couple of different videos going up on my channel. I've kind of been in the mood recently to experiment, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so if you guys read anything really great in September, I'd love to know in the comments down below. And if you guys have any plans for October, also leave them down below if you want. I don't know. Let's just look forward to this month together. But other than that, I think that's going to be everything for this video. So thank you guys so, so, so much for watching and I will catch you later. Bye!